Hi everyone, it's Nick. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Okay, in this video today, we are going to be talking about unnecessary furniture and home decor items that you do not need for your home. These are items that I see pop up over and over that people say that they need to have, that they have to have them. And I'm here to tell you that I don't think that you do. You know, if you love these items, if you want these furniture pieces, I'm mostly focused on furniture in this video. If you love them and you think that they're great and they're functional and they work for you, fantastic, keep them, that's great. But if you don't have them and you kind of feel bad about it and you feel like you need to pick these things up, I would think twice. I think these are a little bit unnecessary, depending, of course, on the function of your home. So let's talk about those items. Okay, but before we jump into the video, I wanted to take a minute and thank today's sponsor, which is Seed. Now, Seed has sent me some of their beautiful products, as well as this amazing hoodie. And when someone sends me a free hoodie, I wear it in a video, absolutely guaranteed. And I'm really, really impressed with their products because I have a lot going on in my life right now. I just had a flood the other day. Yes, again, if you've been here for a while, you know my apartment flooded two years ago. So I've had a lot of stress and I've been looking for wellness things to incorporate into my life on a routine basis and I've been taking seed now for a couple of weeks and it's been really fantastic and it's been a great part of my daily ritual. I've been taking the DS01 with my coffee every morning and it's really been part of my morning ritual. It's really easy to take and convenient. It's important to take care of my body I think and first thing in the morning is a great time to sort of build in these daily rituals and especially before I have breakfast to just ensure that I maximize all the benefits that I get for the rest of the day. Now DS1 is a symbiotic meaning this supplement is a two-in-one prebiotic and probiotic, which helps both feed and populate beneficial gut bacteria. I love this approach because I know I'm getting the right balance of bacteria to support and maintain my microbiome. It's third-party tested, and unlike other pre and probiotics, seed doesn't include any artificial colors or flavors, so you don't have any worries there. It's also engineered with a capsule and capsule via cap, so I know all the bacteria will be protected and make it to the gut alive. That's really important because some of the bacteria doesn't usually survive the stomach acids with other products, so it's really important that it does here. If you want to try out DS01 by seed today, try my code Nick for 30% off your first purchase and check out the link in my description. Thank you Seed for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the rest of it. Okay, first up on my list is going to be end tables or really any table that is like a pedestal table that is really just designed to serve and just to have basically a drink to set on. I would think twice necessarily about always needing an end table. Again, an end table is nice. I love end tables. I think they're great, but I think it's really important to actually sit in your space and think of the function of actually having a drink, being in your room, having guests over, sit in all the different chairs, and really think twice about whether or not every seat necessarily needs its own end table. Because I don't think that it necessarily does. I also think there is room for different seats in different areas of the home to share an end table. And I think depending on the size of your room, that might make sense. So let's say you have a larger living room and you've got two different chairs there, having a side table that sort of sits in between them, perfectly fine. If you have a sofa or a sectional, I think an end table or a side table can be fine for both, but it might not necessarily be needed if you have a coffee table in the middle and it's within reach for people to be able to use for the purposes of, you know, putting their drink on or whatever. Again, I love end tables. If you love yours, keep them. They're fantastic. But if you don't have one and your room still functions perfectly well and it feels really natural to put your drink and your food and whatever on the coffee table or to share a table with the neighboring seat, you don't necessarily need one. You don't, you need to think twice about having so many end tables. You don't need five in a living room or three or whatever. It's not necessary. Necessary. Okay, next up on my list, kind of in the same vein, is going to be nightstands. I love nightstands too. I love all the pieces here, okay? I love them all. Well, maybe not all of them, but I like a lot of them. And I do like nightstands, but I do think that they are not always necessary, especially if you have a small bedroom. I have a, quite a small bedroom. I don't have room to put two large nightstands next to a queen size bed and actually make it work. I just really don't. I would have to get something really, really slim. And that's okay. You don't have to get two nightstands necessarily. They're great if you have the room for it. Awesome, they're functional. You can put books in there, you can put your glasses on there, your phone, glass of water, whatever you need next to that bed, but you don't necessarily need them all the time. I think if you have a smaller bedroom, I think you should really think twice about bringing in some bulky nightstands because they do not fit the scale of the room. I think you'd be better off with maybe something like a nice, simple, basic shelf. Something like a lac shelf that you can get at Ikea is so, so cheap and honestly, kind of serves the basic function of what you're gonna need a nightstand for, right? Place to put the book, the glasses, the water, the cell phone, whatever. That's really all you need it for. So don't beat yourself up over necessarily needing these giant nightstands that you know you can buy from Restoration Hardware or whatever, and just make do with something a little bit more pared down, a little bit more simple that serves your basic functional needs that you're gonna need in the bedroom. That's all that's necessary. Okay, next up on my list is gonna be huge built-ins. Built-in cabinetries. The giant media entertainment center of the 90s, reborn 
one as these huge built-in pieces that go usually next to the television right there in these huge grand living rooms. I know it's like you see Studio McGee, like they love it. Like all these shows have these huge built-ins and they're really gorgeous and they're beautifully styled always, right? They're always looking good. They've got these cute little decor pieces, little trinkets that people have picked up and whatever and people have this really aspirational idea of getting these huge, huge built-ins next to their televisions. And again, if you love it and you can do it and you can afford it and you have the space for it, go for it. But they're not particularly functional, I think, for most people because most of the pieces that you're going to actually need in that area are not gonna be particularly attractive, right? We're talking about the old DVD collections. We're talking about the PlayStation controllers, right? We're talking about the Xbox and the, the maybe the sound bar and all the remotes and the controllers and the whatevers. All those things are not particularly attractive. And so personally, I am a little bit more in favor of a closed door media console or some sort of area where you can close off these shelving areas. Areas. Because these massive built-ins, which again can be stunning, tend to just kind of show off these beautiful pieces that look really great in magazines and really great architectural digest and on Instagram, but they don't necessarily make sense for most people. Most people don't have curated, like, I don't know, decor pieces and little like uh, catch-alls that they picked up from a bazaar in Morocco or something. Most people don't have that. And that's fine. If you do, great, then you have built-ins to display them for all to see. But if you don't, I don't think you should beat yourself up just because you don't have these huge built-ins. Make do with something like a basic media console that is going to suit you just fine. Go with bookshelves if you're not looking for something super permanent. Those can be really great too. But remember that those huge built-ins are often beautifully styled and I think that's what makes them so aspirational for people because they think they're going to live that way. But the reality is, is that most people don't. So if you're doing a new build or a renovation and you're desperate for these built-ins, go for it. If you have it, go for it. Style them gorgeously. We want to see them on social media. If you don't have them, um, don't fret. It's not that big of a deal because you probably weren't gonna put nice stuff on there anyway. Okay, next up is gonna be a towel ladder. So this one is actually one that I don't actually particularly love out of all these, because these other ones can be beautiful. And I guess a towel ladder maybe can be too, but this is not an efficient way to store towels. Can we, can we, can we all agree on that? Like, can we all agree that there are better ways? Like, oh, I don't know, call me crazy folding up those towels and shove them in a drawer. Like that's actually far and away a better way to store most linens and most towels and things. But these towel ladders look really great, don't they? Or at least some people think that they do. And so they like to kind of like delicately sort of hang their beautiful, gorgeous towels and just like lay them over top of these ladders that sit in these gorgeous bathrooms. And that's kind of the vision. You know, I don't know. I just think that these pieces are fine, but super unnecessary. This is not, the best way to store a towel. If you love them, go for it. If you have one, keep styling it. But if you don't, don't worry about it. Just shove them in a drawer. That's what most people do and they're perfectly fine. No one needs a towel ladder. It's unnecessary. If you love it, keep it. If you don't, skip it. Okay, next up on my list is gonna be footstools or ottomans. We're going back to the living room here. Okay, footstools or ottomans. I sometimes think that people sort of, I don't know I'm gonna say worst case scenario things and they think of like, what happens if I host a party of 32 people? You know what I mean? Like, what do I do if I've got 32 people coming over? Panic, we need a bunch of footstools and ottomans just in case those people show up. Then you realize you don't even like 32 people. And so why do you need ottomans for all of them? They can sit on the floor because you don't even really like them, right? It's kind of like why when people are like, how many seats do I need in my car? And they're like, I need an SUV in case I, you know, I don't know, have 14 children and need to go to Costco. And so we tend to get these bigger cars. Sometimes we tend to overthink and catastrophize where our life is gonna go or maybe we're optimistic and we think we're gonna have all these people over and it turns out they don't really like us either. And so we think we're gonna need these big houses with all these big amounts of seating and whatever because we've got all these people coming over and they're not coming, honey, they're not coming. So you don't need a bunch of footstools, you don't need a bunch of ottomans for the occasional seating that's never coming is I think really where I'm at with this one. So if you love these, great. If you like to put your feet up, I guess have one, that's what a footstool's for. I don't think you're putting your feet up as much as you might think you would, but I don't know you, maybe you do. So so go for it, get a, a footstool, I guess. It's better than some weird, ugly recliner and a marshmallow sofa. So, I mean, that's cool. But all these ottomans that are just sort of there hanging out, like you see in Restoration Hardware, they've got like the two that's always like symmetrical right next to the fireplace. I don't think they're coming. I don't think they're necessary. They're purely just there for show. And I think you'd be better off with, honestly, the seating you already have. You've got a dining table, 
most likely. You've got four, six, maybe eight seats there, right? On the occasional opportunity where you're hosting some wedding shower or something for your niece, then, you know, whip those up, get those over from the dining room. You know what I mean? Like no one cares. Like you can just use those for the once every three years, you're gonna have all those people over. I say, fine. I would say get the adequate amount of seating that you're going to need most of the time, realistically for your home. And then, you know, if you need to bring in some temporary seating during the holidays or whatever, then that thing's fine. But having like full-time ottomans and footstools all over the place, just because you might think someone's showing up, I think that's unnecessary. And also, by the way, if you're really concerned about it, check out this coffee table that I just found from Crate and Barrel, which has this ingenious two little cute little ottomans that are just sort of sitting in the side there. How cute is that? So that looks like a really great idea. If you think that you might need those ottomans on a semi-regular basis. If you don't, skip them, use the dining chairs, use other seating, you've got other options. Don't worry about these, skip these ones. Okay, and then next up is going to be a bar cart. And I know I say this as a person who has alcohol displayed in the background, I'm cool with that. But at least a bar cabinet for the record actually stores all your wine glasses and champagne flutes and things that you might actually use depending on how much you drink, whatever. But you need those things, right? So it is storage and therefore filling a function. A bar cart can be great. I don't hate on a bar cart, they can be fine. If you love one, go for it. But it's not the necessarily, like you have other options, let's be honest, about places that you could store your glassware and all your alcohol and things. Like you've got options there. You don't necessarily need to like wheel in your bar cart when your friends come over. I don't think that necessarily needs to be there for you. You've got other places to store, other places that you can have that, that stuff. You don't really need a bar cart. Unless you really love the look of displaying your alcoholism, in which case you have at it, have fun. That sounds uh, good for you. Um, I promise no, no one's uh, no one's concerned is all I'm saying. You know, if you've got that bar cart and you love it, then you just throw all your alcohol in there and that's cool. So again, I would put this in the category of if you love it, keep it. But if you don't love it and you don't have one and you're like, gosh, I need my bar cart because I've got, you know, seven bottles of vodka and three uh, bottles of, of rum that I need to display somewhere, I would just rethink it, throw it in the cabinet. Do you really need to display all that alcohol? I don't think you do. And I think you've got better places to store your glassware, maybe in the kitchen, maybe in storage, maybe in a bar cabinet like I have, something a little bit more functional than necessarily displaying it. Choose what you want to display. If you want to display that alcohol, fine, go with the bar cart. But if you don't, Ditch the bar cart, that's all I'm saying. Okay, and the last one here, which is a little bit more decor, is just seasonal decor, like anything seasonal. You know, in the world of hyper consumerism that we live here in, in our world, especially here in North America, we are told by retailers that we need to almost swap out our entire houses every three months to fit with whatever the next holiday is. My personal rule around tradition is always be critical of tradition and whether or not something like you need to do something, just really ask yourself if it suits you. Like, does it serve you to necessarily flip your entire house for the Christmas season or Hanukkah or Easter or like whatever you do? If it does and you love it, Go for it, have at it. But don't necessarily think that you need to. You know, like I love Christmas, it's my favorite holiday, even though I love to make fun of Christmas decor, one of my favorite things. I love a Christmas tree, I think it's great. I think that there's a lot of great, beautiful Christmas decor out there that I think is really awesome. I do have issue with the idea that like it's fall, so it's time to like get out all the plaid and change out all your pillows, and now you gotta switch your whole house to earth tones, even though you have a beach theme in your home, so oh, that looks a little bit messy. So we need to like change everything out all the time, and oh, it's Easter, so here comes the bunny, and the chickens or whatever is Easter, whatever. I don't think you need to do all that. If you're having fun, if you love it, if your kids love it, fine, go do it. Don't let me stop you. But really second guess whether this whole move of having to turn over your entire house every few months is serving you or serving home goods that's convinced you that you need to swap out your entire house. I feel like there's a seasonal industrial complex that's determined to sort of swap our entire homes every, every little bit. And I don't think it's really necessary. If you are looking to add a little bit of seasonal flavor just to kind of enjoy, then, you know, things like scents, like changing your candles to maybe match sort of a spring scent, like citrusy in the, in the spring, if you feel so inclined, and maybe something a little bit more in the cinnamon, sage, whatever. Um, like I like to light some of, some of my favorite candles. I'll link them down below if you're interested. Uh, depending on the season, right? Like that can be super fun. Just really be mindful of what serves you and what doesn't. And uh, just remember, it's not all necessary. You don't have to change out your pillows every little bit just to match whatever the season is. You just don't need to. Whatever your color 
scheme is, whatever you design for your home is totally fine. Now, if you're having fun and you wanna change it out, go for it, but it's not needed. That's it for me for today, guys. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Comment what your uh, like unnecessary items are. Maybe you have them in your own home, maybe you don't, but you kind of feel guilty about it, or maybe you didn't ever buy into the trend, you didn't believe the hype, and you're really glad that you didn't. Comment below, let me know what you think those things are, and I will see you all in the next video. And here's a new one, by the way, for you to watch if you wanna check out that video, and I will see you all in the next one. Thanks a lot, bye.